Hello, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. In order to achieve a high score in Academic Writing Task 1, you need to know how to plan your essay correctly. This is very important and in this lesson I'm going to explain why and show you how. The lesson includes three reasons why you must plan your essay, four simple steps of essay planning and a four-part essay structure. Many students get a far lower score than they're capable of achieving simply because they either don't know how to plan their Task 1 essay or they think that planning takes up time that is better spent writing the essay. Here are three key reasons why you should plan. Number one, planning saves you time. If you plan your essay before you start writing, you'll already know what you're going to say and won't need to keep stopping to think about the next idea. This means that you'll be able to write much faster than if you don't have a plan. You only need to spend five minutes on the planning stage. That leaves 15 minutes to write and check your essay. Reason two, planning results in a more relevant answer. 25% of your marks are for task achievement. This includes identifying the main features, comparing the main features and answering the question appropriately. Planning before you start writing will ensure that you include everything that's required in your essay. Planning also results in a better structure, for example, in organising your ideas into a logical order, having a separate paragraph for each part of the essay, and linking your paragraphs appropriately. You may have done a fantastic job of identifying the main features of the graphic and found some great comparisons to write about, but you must also be able to form your ideas into a well-structured essay. Without a plan, this is difficult to achieve. Unless you have a good essay structure, you will not score highly for cohesion and coherence. Spending a few minutes planning your essay will give you a basic outline to follow as you write. This will make your task a lot easier and lead to a far better essay and a happy examiner. There are five steps to writing a good essay for task one. Analyse the question, identify the main features, write an introduction, write an overview and write the detailed paragraphs. We'll look at these in more detail in a minute, but first I want to outline an easy to remember four part essay structure. You can use the same basic structure for all academic task one questions. Ideally, your essay should have four paragraphs. Paragraph one is the introduction. Paragraph two, an overview. Paragraph three, the first main feature. And paragraph four, you write about the second main feature. You are only required to write 150 words, so with only 20 minutes allowed for the task, it's important that you don't try to include too many details. Having an essay structure to work with will help you with this. Aim for quality in your essay, not quantity. The right information written in the logical order. We're now ready to work through the five step planning process. First, analyse the question. The format of every question in Academic Writing Task 1 is the same. Here's a typical question. The highlighted words will always be the same no matter what type of question you get. The chart below shows the number of men and women in further education in Britain in three periods and whether they were studying full-time or part-time. Summarise the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Every question consists of a brief description of the graphic, the instructions and the graphic itself, be it a chart, graph, table, etc. To find out what you have to do, you need to look at the instruction sentence. It will be the same for every question and every type of graphic. It reads, summarise the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. So there are three things to do. One, select the main features. Two, write about the main features. And three, compare the main features. Many graphics contain a lot of information, but you do not have to write about everything. Just pick out a couple of the main features 
and you'll have plenty to write about. Step two is to identify the main features. In this lesson, I'm going to give you a quick overview of how to identify the main features of the graphics. I go into far more detail in the lessons on the individual question types, where I work through sample questions step by step to create model answers. You'll find all these lessons on the website via the link in the notes below this video. Here's a reminder of the seven question types. A bar chart, a line graph, a table chart, pie chart, process diagram, maps and multiple graphs. The key features of a graphic will usually be the easiest things to spot. For a bar chart with a timeline, known as a dynamic bar chart, such as in our sample question, look for general trends. The timeline will give you the biggest clues as to the most significant trends. Alternatively, a bar chart or line graph may be static with the data coming from one point in time. For this type of graphic, you would need to compare whatever different variables are shown. In the in-depth lesson on bar chart essays, for example, you'll see a graph showing the different leisure activities favoured by Canadian boys and girls. There will be lots of information in the graphic to help you spot the main features. Here are some useful questions to ask for both bar charts and line graphs. What information do the two axes give? What are the units of measurement? What can you learn from the title and any labels? What are the time periods? What is the most obvious trend? What are the most notable similarities or differences? Two general trends in this graphic are main feature one, the overall number of students in full-time education increases and main feature two, the number of women studying part-time increases steadily but for men it fluctuates. The general trends you select will be the starting point for your essay. You will then go on to add more detail. Let's look at how to do this. Here's a quick reminder of the four part structure for our essay. Paragraph 1 is the introduction. Paragraph 2, the overview. Paragraph 3, the first main idea. And paragraph 4, the second main feature. This structure isn't going to be an exact fit for every possible essay but it's an excellent outline to work from. Use it as a guideline and adapt it as necessary. First, the introduction. There isn't room to include the graphic on each slide, but if you want to refer to it as we work through the four paragraphs, bring up the planning page of my website, ieltsjackie.com, where you'll be able to see it. The link's in the notes below. In the introduction, you should paraphrase the question. That is, say the same thing in a different way. You can do this by using synonyms and changing the sentence structure. For example, the question is, the chart below shows the number of men and women in further education in Britain in three periods and whether they were studying full-time or part-time. And we could paraphrase it like this. The bar graph illustrates how many male and female students were studying full-time and part-time in Britain during the years 1970-71, 1980-81 and 1990-91. That's all you need to do for the introduction. In the second paragraph, the overview, you should report the main features you can see in the graph, giving only general information. The detail comes later in the essay. You should also make clear any comparisons you spot. This is where you write about the general trends. Here are the ones we picked out earlier. Main feature 1. The overall number of students in full-time education increases. And main feature 2. The number of women studying part-time increases steadily, but for men it fluctuates. Now form these ideas into two or three sentences with a total of around 40 words. State the information simply, using synonyms where possible. No elaborate vocabulary or grammar or structure is required. Just the appropriate words and the correct verb tenses. For example, overall, the number of students in full-time education increased over this time. 
With regard to part-time education, there was a steady increase in women choosing to study part-time, but for men the level fluctuated. Paragraphs 3 and 4 are where you include more detailed information about the data in the graph. In paragraph 3, you should give evidence to support your first main feature. In this instance, the data will be numbers of students in the respective time periods. In other graphics, it might be percentages, ages, monetary value, or some other unit of measurement. Don't forget to make comparisons when relevant. So here is our first main feature again. Main feature 1. The overall number of students in full-time education increases. This is an example of what you could write. Between the academic periods 1970-71 and 1990-91, the figures for men studying full-time grew in steady increments, beginning at 100,000 in 1970-71 and rising to nearly 300,000 in 1990-91. For women, the numbers had also risen to around 300,000 by 1990-91 on an increasing trend. Notably, however, the figure for females in full-time education in 1970-71 was roughly half that of men, showing a greater take-up than men between 1970-71 and 1980-81. For the fourth and final paragraph, you do the same thing for the second main feature. Our main feature too is the number of women studying part-time increases steadily, but for men it fluctuates. And this is how you could write the paragraph. A different pattern is shown for part-time education. The graph reveals a steady increase in women engaged in part-time study, rising from 750,000 in 1970-71 to a million by 1990-91. For men, on the other hand, the figure fluctuates. From a million in 1970-71 they had dropped by almost 200,000 by 1980-81, but recovered slightly in numbers by 1990-91. Over the whole period, the trend between men and women in part-time education reversed, with male students being greater in number in 1970-71 and female students taking pole position by 1990-91. Here are the four paragraphs brought together to create our finished essay. Pause the video and read through it so that you can hear how the four elements flow from one to the other. This sample essay is well over the minimum word limit, so you can see that you don't have much space to include very much detail at all. That's why it's essential to select just a couple of main features to write about. We've covered a lot in this lesson, but please don't feel overwhelmed. Once you start using what you've learnt to practice answering task 1 questions, You'll soon be able to plan your essay in five minutes. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.